Hello, I'm Cyberax with Outlandishly Crafted, and today we're talking about destructibility, repairing, and a few other things that go along with it, like, what if you want to chop the head off of a zombie, or their arms, or make them explode, or... I don't know. There's all kinds of things you can do. The system we're going to be teaching today is a trick I learned that I think in a few minutes you can tweak into all kinds of different places. And it is exciting to see what people will do with it. So let's get started. Here we go. We're in a world and I've got some entity furniture sitting here. Some cool ones. I got some sword rack. I got some chairs. I got some barrels uh, and some bookshelves. So we're gonna jump up and we're gonna go look at these. We got a nice little guy there. I got chairs. I can sit in the chairs. Uh, you can see that they're entities. I can rotate them. I can change them to different things. Uh, whatever we want, right? We can put stuff inside of them. We could. Uh, add the different books so there's a different assortment of books on them. We got all these fun things put in. So you see their entities. Now, what happens if a player runs up and hits one? Okay, it shaked. Oh, some books moved. <gasps> books fell off. That's pretty cool. Hit it again. I got a little particle in there saying, hey, it's taking damage. We got some text popping up saying destroyed. So there's no more damage you can do to it. Now, what would happen if I repaired it? Oh, it goes back to normal. So now I've got this basic concept where I could take a chair, and if the player hits it, it, it now does damage to it. They hit it again, it does more damage to it. They hit it more and more, and now it's destroyed. Same thing here, we have a chair, we hit it, we hit it again, we hit it, we hit it. Now here, it still can be sat on, so I'll show you a trick to fix that as well. So what about the sword rack? So you hit the sword rack, it does a little wave, like everything moves. You hit it again, and now it breaks, and one of the swords fall. You hit it again, you keep hitting it, and now it's destroyed and falls apart. What about the barrels? You hit the barrel, it reacts, it has some particles pop off. You hit it again, it starts to break, we have particle water coming out, uh oh, now it's leaking, now we got a problem. We hit it again, we keep hitting it, and then it flips over, now the particle water's still coming out, and it feels natural, it feels like, ah, it's leaking, it's broken. What about these barrels? Same thing, we hit them. That one's got water in it. We hit it, and it knocks over. So all of these are using the exact same concept, the same logic, and you can see really quickly how you can expand that logic out. Now, one of the things you can also do is my change logic works even when they're broken. So you can come over and you can change these to different things, even when they're on the ground and broken, which gives you the ability to have something like a bookshelf go on. And when you break it, you could have in some rooms a bookshelf with books on the ground. You can have in some room with books not on the ground. You can have it a assortment of different books on the ground so that really easily you get all of these different options for the map maker to do different things that you want. Now if you also add in the color side of things, then you can also change the colors with it. But today we're talking about destructibility, so let's get back to that. So you can see it's taking damage. If you don't like that red, you can change that in the RP entity file to whatever color you want. We can talk about that as well. But for now, let's go back to the chair. So let's look at this chair. Let's heal the chair. So we're gonna repair it. So now that the chair's at full health, we're gonna hit it, it's hurt. It has minor damage. We're gonna hit it again, it has major damage. We're gonna hit it again, hit it again, hit it again. 
Now, I'm just using my fist, right? So if we repair these, watch this. If I give myself a sword, say a diamond sword, and I hit this one, that's what damage it does with a with one hand hit. What if I hit this one with a sword, instantly destroys it? So it's not that they're just breaking, it's that they actually have stages of breaking. So I use something really powerful and I'm gonna, they're gonna break all the way. But if I use my hand, then they're gonna have multiple stages of breaking. If I use a shovel or something wooden, it's gonna take longer for them to break. And you can expand this logic as far as you want. This logic could be a thousand hits and you have a thousand different stages of breaking to where it has a little dent and loses a piece or loses a piece there. Whatever you want, you can expand that out so that it's up to you what the levels of destructibility are. So let's jump into what this looks like first in block bench. So in block bench, I just have a normal chair. I have each of my segments that I want to break apart into different bones. That ma that makes sense, right? Cuz you're going to animate them so they have to be in different bones. So I then just set up simple animation that first hit it does a little bit of movement and I have two different types that I set up so I set up one where it breaks the seat this is the one where you'd say it's not sitable after the first hit so you can't sit on this chair after the first hit whereas this one you could hit it and then still sit in it it would be after the second well it actually be after the third hit that you would take away the ability to sit to keep the logic going with the chair so we have break one then we have break two. And break two, it, this is a better example. Let's start here. So we have break one, and all we're doing is hold on last frame. So we play animation one, and then we stop right here. Now you have to use an animation controller for this to work. So you play first break, and then we hold. And then you just duplicate this take all of the keyframes at the very end, or I'm sorry, all of the other keyframes and delete them except the last one. So I'll, all I want is the very last frame of everything that's being done here. So I have my animation plays from start full health to here. So I would duplicate each of these so that the last frame of this one matches the first frame of this one and same thing the last frame of this one matches the first frame of the next one so it's seamless and each one of these is just set to hold on last frame so I do a little bit of damage and then I go to the beginning of the next frame and I do a little bit of damage and I go to the beginning of the next frame and I do a little bit of damage and that's it and you could expand this out to be 20 of them. You could expand it out to be 100 of them. There's no limit. And you could apply this to zombies, to players, to whatever you want. Just keep in mind that you're only doing animation. You're only affecting the animation. You're not affecting the logic of the game. So when we talk about cutting off an ar uh, arm of a zombie, if, it, if you're going to have it go to the ground then you're going to have to do some tricks to keep it on the ground and not moving because it's still part of the zombie p character. So there's some, there's some places where you, you can use this very easily. If the entity doesn't move around, then it's very easy to just throw this in right away. If the entity moves around, then you have to do some logic and decide how you want to do that. And I'll show that to you in, uh, at, let's just do that right now. I'll show it to you in a skeleton. So if we jump over and we look at our monsters and we have a skeleton. So I did the same thing with the skeleton for... Oh man, it's not it's not in here. Okay, let's come back to that cuz I want to show that to you in the game 
first before we get uh, too far into it. So let's go back now to bridge and let's look at how do we set this up in the animation controller and how do we set this up just in the animations. So in the RP entity file. So in RP entity file, this is literally just break one, animation one, break two, animation two, break three, animation three, and then an animation controller. That's it. It's so dumb, easy, so dumb, stupid, that I think a lot of people just look over how easy it is to put destructibility into your game. So here we have particle effects and particle sounds that I just match up with those. So let's look at what the animation controller looks like. I have that here. So here's break stuff, animation controller. You can use this same animation controller for a whole bunch of different things. And so we have full health, and all we're doing is setting up three different states. We have full health, and then a hurt stage, a hurt stage, and a hurt stage. And you can see all I'm doing is querying the health of the entity. So I've set the health of the entity to 40. That's the max. And as soon as any damage is done, we go to stage one. Now, the difference in how this works is it's a A, B, C, D, and then it stops um, loop. So it, um, the logic here is that it plays A, it can't go back to A once it goes to B. So once you've done damage, it can't go backwards. It doesn't loop back. It simply continues to the next one as more damage is done and so on. Now, at any point, if it's healed, then it goes back to full health and it just heals itself. So there's a break. So we have play stage one, play stage two, play stage three, and they just keep going. We have it in here that it can skip them, and that's where if you use a sword and you do more damage than three, then you're going to skip automatically to stage two. But if you do more damage than uh, nine, then you're going to skip to stage three automatically. So you're going to skip those other two stages and just jump right to destroyed. And you could add in as many stages as you want. So for like the grain, I have four stages, and I added an extra stage on the end. So you can you could do 20 stages. It doesn't matter. You would just change this math. And you could up the health to 100 and count down from 100. You could have the, the health at 10 and count down from 10. But if you do go to 10, you could only have 10 different stages unless you start breaking them up into half health and the game doesn't track half health. So you just keep in mind, uh, one, you know, your fist is one damage, a sword, like a diamond sword or another sword, I think is like seven. So you have to keep that in mind that that's the the range at what you you could have a player do damage to something. A chair, if I take a huge sword and I hit a chair, I should probably destroy it in one hit. That makes sense. If I take my fist and hit a chair, it's probably going to take me uh, quite a few hits. So in this case, we have um, somewhere around like eight to nine hits before you've destroyed it. Now, if you did a grain of... Uh, a, a bag of grain. Let's see if I have another one in here. I have logs, uh, rocks. Uh, let's see. S pretty much the same thing for all of them. You could change this up however you want, but I found that I like 40 is a good range so that the player can't just easily kill the, the entity altogether. So the goal is that the entity is never getting to zero. If the player continues to wail on it and continues to wail on it, continues to wail on it with their fist 40 hits, then yeah, the entity is going to just die um, like an entity would die. We're going to say destroyed is like what, 32 or something, um, 31. And so that gives us a good range that even if the player beats on a little more, it's not going to go anywhere. And that's one reason why I add in those messages to say, hey, uh, you've already done the damage. Stop hitting it, you know. And so here you can see we have uh, for the, the sounds and the particles fire off as well. So when you 
hit it, it fires off, that breaks particle and that breaks uh, stuff. So that makes an easy way for you to add in a, hey, this is broken or whatever. Now you can't add in the message here. So how you do that is you just run a BPAC, so a behavior pack animation controller, and you can match it up to the same health. And then as you match that up to the same health and you do the same queries, you're just instead going to fire off the particle for the health, uh, uh, you know, that little heart that pops up or a, um, a message that's saying ma minor damage, major damage. That could be a percentage. That could be um, whatever you want. Now that you have it in here, you have all the ability in the world to fire off whatever you want. You could have it hit back. You could do all kinds of stuff. You could have it spawn things. So if you wanted to have it uh, actually completely destroy the entity, and then you could spawn a broken entity version of it there. Or in one case, I'm doing a dig spot like you would see in Fable or in uh, the open world games where you're digging in a spot you're using your shovel and it's telling you and running some random logic of did you get something or didn't you get something and you could even put the log the uh loot spawning in here where with a randomizer you just spawn the loot inside that ac so on the rp side we're running the animations and doing a health check and then on the bp side we're running a the behavior side of it and running a health check. The key here is just this health check system. Just give the entity some health and then use the hit on it as a way to do it. Now, same thing, say you wanna have the right click also do damage, then you would just in your behavior do an interact on that that does the effect of instant damage. So you can make right, right and left both do damage if you want. You can have, right now I have it to the right sits. Um, or looks in the inventory, those are all your choices. So that kind of gives you an idea of how you break down the entity. There's really no behavior being involved in the chair. Um, we can look at that file really quick just so you can see it. So let's go to entity, furniture, chairs, chair A, and I have lots of other logic like being able to pick up put a lantern on the seat resize color change change the uh, texture the style and then repair is simply being done by healing it so if we run down here to the repair logic all we're doing is running a health um, on it and then a sound, so you hear it click, 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 like you're repairing, uh, repairing it. They're that it's just that simple. Now I also do have in here a timer loop, so that when you damage it and break it, it starts a timer and it listens for if the player is being ridden, and it listens if the player is nearby. If the player is not nearby after 300 to 900 seconds, it will fix itself. So it will heal itself. So if you're a game maker and you're doing maps and you wanna have a replayable dungeon, you can use this technique so that the player goes in, they blow up all of the barrels, they break all of the chairs, they destroy all of the stuff, and then it just rebuilds and repairs itself naturally when it comes back to being. And that's a really easy way to have a lot of power and make things replayable for their friends and for them every time that they come back in. You could even have it be repair itself and then change its color and change its style so that it looks different every time and add some proceduralness to it all in there, even with randomizing it so that every time they play it's slightly different or this time it's broken and that time it wasn't broken. Uh, all of that can be done just right in here by doing a simple game loop that when you do, when it does receive damage, then you're going to add in a timer and it's just a damage sensor. So 
the entity does damage to me not this one because this is move the entity does damage and he's not using the move tool then I'm gonna open the the loop and it's just a game loop so I'm gonna open the game loop I'm removing closed game loop I'm removing the ability to ride and then I'm adding in the open game loop which then adds in my variant if you want it this is just helping me fire other things off if I want I add in a sensor to say hey if you're writing it stop writing so that right there you can teleport the player off the chair so if I'm sitting on the chair as a player and another player comes up and hits my chair and breaks it I don't want to be sitting on nothing in midair I want it to kick me off the chair and so to do that you on damage of the chair you teleport if writing the nearest player within a block to the block in front of it and you can use um, TP at self or P colon R equals one um, and then do carrots like this and you could do like 0 0.5 and 1 so where the chair is facing it's gonna put it put the character in front of where it's facing one block ahead and slightly up so that it kinda has the feel like the 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 player was kicked out of the chair versus being in a random uh, spot is so it, it carrots use the location of the actual entity that's calling the teleport or the command that's being used against them so that gives you how to repair so how do we fix it uh, we're simply firing that off with a item and the item goes to an interact the interact detects the repair tool fires off the repair event so that's just a simple interaction uh, with a, a item the item then does goes to that side so right there it gives you the ability to do a whole bunch with a very little amount of work where you could go back to all of the entities you have you can just quickly throw their stuff into bones uh, the biggest things the pivot points you just have to think through how it's gonna pivot like this whole back is gonna fall back over the side and then you have to keep in mind that a lot of times like a chair is up against a wall so you just have to kind of think about how that animation's gonna fit into the environment so the more you can keep the animation in the circle of the influence of the animation the better and that's why I have that barrel flipping over in its spot because almost always you have the barrels up against things and so you have to be careful about having the barrel fall out of its spot because you're not changing the behavior you're only changing the visuals so if you move the barrel out of its spot and someone tries to hit it they won't be hitting the hitbox because you've moved them so you have to keep that in mind in that process of how you're building this you want to try to keep it inside the area you can see for the back of the chair I've kind of pushed it out and, and that's fine you just have to decide how what works for you in your environment because I know this when I place the chairs I'm always placing the chairs slightly away from the wall and the stuff that's there so let's jump back to the skeleton really quick let's close this stuff up let's import in this may take me a second to find it because I haven't um, skeleton animation maybe smashed there we go okay so I want to show you a few things uh, also with how do we do this with an entity that's alive so we have I have an entity here's my skeleton I think this is the best best example of where you'd use this but a zombie would work as well and I want to have the it destroy when I hit it so I want to take a big weapon Oh, it sucks because I got to do that at night. Hold on one second. You be then you won't be able to see it. So let me get a.
we'll grab some tinted glass and let's just give a zombie somewhere safe to be. The problem is, is if we do it at night, it's so dark, um, you won't be able to see what's going on. I should have thought of this beforehand. I have a zombie testing place, but it's on a different map and it's just not worth loading up at the moment. So let's grab this. There's not going to be a lot of place to work in here, but it should be fine. You'll get the idea. So filtered glass uh, filters out the sun and allows uh, s stuff that couldn't normally be in the day to be in the day. Oh, I don't want a zombie. I want a skeleton. Sorry. Um, okay, so summon skeleton. Okay, so here's my skeleton. And to make this, let's add some torches. So you can see better. So we got our our guy here. I'm gonna take out a custom weapon just because I want to show them off anyways. Holdable axe. Okay. So I have my big axe, and I want that guy when I run up to him to hit him to not just shake, you know. So he falls apart and his body parts all go flying off with the animation. And then because we have a skeleton of a skeleton, sorry, because we have the skull of a skeleton that we can use, I then summon at the end of his life randomly a head. So this is actually the skeleton block that I just randomly summon that then you can pick up. And it just adds to the effect of what I'm trying to do that I broke this guy in par apart and his body parts go flying around and then his head just pops up. And you can see in the animation, all I did was just add in an animation that's playing and you could do you could change that however you want. The reason why I did it this way is if you have the bone, like if I chop off his arm and the arm lands there and he's not dead and he keeps moving, the arm will move with him. And I don't want to have to go make an entity arm and all these body parts to then summon to have laying around. Now you could do that. You could, when I hit his arm, it chops off the arm and that's the first set of damage that's being done in, let's look at the animation. So let's pull up. Um, so the first set of damage that's being done is he just shakes. And then the second animation is he smashes. So you could change it to where his arm falls off. And that's the first animation. And then you summon a entity arm that just lays on the ground. That's perfect. That would work. And to do that, all you would do is uh, scale his arm down on each of those break points. So just like before on the chair... Instead of breaking the chair apart and the chair just sitting there, instead take the arm and scale it to zero so the arm disappears. And it will give the impression that you're breaking those parts off. Uh, or you could have the arm fly out and go out a distance and then scale it down, which is what I'm doing on the skeleton. I'm scaling these to zero out way out here. So you can see... Oh, man, I've been using a different editor, and now I'm forgetting what buttons do what. So you can see as the chest bone flies out, it spins, it spins, it gets smaller and smaller, and then to nothing. If you have um, 20 of these skeletons coming at you in a big area, and you're just bashing and bashing, this just looks amazing. So it, it works really well. Then you can also do other, uh, like the death animation and stuff. You can change these to be different animations and play those as well if you want. The key here is that you have to turn off the movement of the skeleton once you get to this point. And normally I'll use like health uh, less than three. 
So if the, the skeleton has less than three health, then play the death animation. His skeleton falls to the ground, remove his movement uh, components with a, an event a component group, just take him out, and then he can't move anymore. So he's still technically alive, but he's just he's just there on the ground. And then the player can go up and finish him, or you could have a timer that he just dies and sinks into the ground um, on his own. Uh, and that's kind of the idea of like the summoning where you could have him uh, summon up from the ground and then also sink into the ground. So that gives you a good idea of how to break stuff apart. It's really simple. Just make, uh, make an animation for each of the stages. And then in your resource um, pack, in your entity file, you're just going to add those in and you're going to make a animation controller that goes one way. So we're going from full health to the next stage to the next stage. And it still can go back. It has a return route, a break, but it's only if it gets healed. So if it gets healed, it breaks, it comes back up. Now, you do have to be aware that in this situation, if you break stuff like this and you you have all your furniture broken and then you want to have magic where you heal your friends or you heal stuff you do have to be careful that like the monkey the special ability of the monkey is he plays music and heals everybody but i have it as an area heal for all entities and you can see it healed all of the furniture so that's something just to keep in mind in the background that that's not a great solution overall that <laughs> I, I needed to set this to just players are healed uh, not everything nearby I mean it's kind of cool if you want it to be that way uh, but it, it, it's not going for what I'm trying to do that the furniture stays broken for the most part so there you go. If you have any other questions, uh, check out my website, Outlandishly Crafted, or check out the other guides on the channel. And thanks for watching. Uh, definitely give us a plus up if you like it, or put some comments in. always helps. If you have any other questions about this technique or how to use it, put the comments in the uh, down below, or check out the Blockbench Discord or the Bedrock Dev Discord channels. Bridge Discord channel, those are all great places that you can jump in and get a lot of help with all of these different things going on. Uh, if you'd like to help support me, check out my add-ons on Marketplace. They are Dragonfire Bedrock Edition and Dragonfire Nations. Check those out. Thank you so much.